Hey guys, it's Mo May and welcome to our As Many As series. And today we're gonna to be using the Tis the Season paper and we're gonna be making as many as cards and tags and maybe other things as I can do with this paper pack. Now this is probably gonna be a multi-series video. I don't know how many yet, but if there are multiple series, we'll be sure to put them in the description below so you can follow along that way. And we'll also adjust the titles to let you know for sure if it's part one, two, three, or four. Okay. This paper pack is gorgeous. First off, it is so me. It is like literally me. <laughs> so the first thing you do when you're going to do an as many as is you break down the paper pad or you dissect it. Okay. So this first page, although used to, these were kind of plasticky and we didn't really use them. What Echo Park has done now is they have put really pretty little cut aparts on the back. So I'm going to be using these cut aparts. We'll be cutting those and I'm going to run through and get all of my cut aparts out first. There's another set. You'll get to see all of this up close. Don't worry that I'm flipping kind of fast. Um, you'll see all of this up close as we go along because you'll see me making cards and things with them. So I just want to pull them all out of here. All right. Then I have my sticker sheet and I just save my sticker sheet um, for later. I don't have to do anything to it now. I can just put it aside. Now the other thing I really like to do when I'm breaking my paper pads apart is I want to go through and see if there is a full size sheet of paper that I want to use for a different project so I do not accidentally use it in the one I'm working on. For example, I love this piece, but I don't want to cut it apart because I might want to use this for a scrapbook page or a 12 by 12 frame or who knows. So I'm gonna put this piece aside. Then I'm gonna flip through and see if I see any more. I think there was one more, there is. This one is perfect to make an advent calendar with or to use on an advent calendar. And as I'm looking at it, I can kind of imagine what I want to do with it. So I'm going to put this one aside as well to use for an advent calendar. All right. The rest of these pages are, for, are fair game. All of these guys plus my stickers. Let's go ahead and move these out of the way. Now, these projects don't really take all that long unless you decide to get very, very detailed in what you're making and uh, make some very intricate cards. I actually have an idea for this year that I want to try to do and see how far we can get with it. So we'll get there in a few minutes. All right. This is my trimmer. This is my paper. I am going to cut it apart on the lines. Here's what I love about paper pack companies. Most of them do this for you. Most of them line this up so that you have a really simple cutting job and you can get them all done pretty fast. So I'm just gonna run through and just cut, cut everything apart where they kind of made it for me to cut apart. I did get a little extra there, but I can trim that later. So this will get me six postcards, just like so. Now let's talk about this strip. This guy, this little section right here is really cute and it is totally usable. And if you would like to use it, cut it apart and use it. I typically don't use this little strip. It kind of just gets in my way. But I think for this time, I will try to use it. I normally don't. You have to decide if you want to or not. I may just challenge myself to use the little strips as well so I have even less waste. So let's cut this all off of here. All of the branding can come off of the page now. I might even want to use this little piece right here that says, tis the season. Isn't that cute? I might do that. That's kind of cute. I'm going to save that too. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. What is this turning into? Look, there it is there too. Oh, we'll see. That's an if. We may not. So let's go ahead and cut this one down. All right. Suggestions if you're going to do a project like this. Get yourself. I love, let me show you. I love these clear plastic envelopes that snap like this and they hold so much paper and so much ephemera. This is actually a leftover from last year, but you can see you can put all of your little pieces in here to use for another time. Get yourself a container to put all of your little scraps in. So if you can't sit down and do this project from start to finish, then all of the pieces to your paper pack are in the same place when you come back to start working on it again. It's just better to keep everything close together. Okay, so let's look at what all we've gotten. We got all of these little guys, and I love to use these for fronts of cards. I think they're perfect, quick, easy ways to get fronts of cards made. These guys as well. Last year, I did some five by seven cards, and I feel like these may lean themselves to five by seven very much, so we'll probably see some of that. This one right here, I may make just a special card using this because I think it's gorgeous. I love that one. And then all these little pieces that I just was, was able to get out of that piece, I don't know how I'm gonna use them, but I've got them all broken apart. So this kind of gets me going. Isn't this cool? All right, let me show you this too. Let's say you get to a piece like this one that has this, it's a, um, the most wonderful time of the year at the top. Yes, you can cut it apart from these little banners and I may end up doing that, 
But for now, I decided to leave it in case I wanted to use it as all one piece. So that's why I didn't cut that one too far apart. But these guys, I cut them all down. I miss some. <laughs> so I miss these. I'm going to go back and cut these three really quick. Also, while I cut those, I'm going to go ahead and trim these corners off of these tags because you guessed it, I'm using these as tags. They made them for me and I'm using them. So while we're prepping, let's look at these guys. So these cut aparts all have enough of a sentiment or enough images on them that I can use them just like they are. I don't need to do any work to them. You can see how they're, they'll work for the front of a card. Here, I even can write on here if I want to. I think that would be super cute. So I'm gonna put those aside. These guys need something. See how they're kind of blank? They're cute as they can be, but they need something on there. And I can use something that works, you know, like with the word recipe or something like that. But I think what I'm gonna do is just, um, stamp them Merry Christmas. I'll show you which stamp I'm gonna to use too. Okay, for this little recipe guy, I've decided to turn him on his side and I'm gonna stamp him, have a holly jolly Christmas, cause that's my recipe for Christmas. Have a holly jolly Christmas, right? That's what I'm gonna call it. That's what I'm gonna do on this one. I think it'll be cute. This um, sentiment is actually from the stamp set called Holly and Heels for Christmas. Uh, it's one of our recent Christmas releases, and I think it's so pretty on there, isn't it? Love that. So the recipe for Christmas, have a holly jolly one. That's how easy it is. Now for my other ones, I'm going to use from the same stamp set. I'm in love, in love, in love with the Merry Christmas from that stamp set. Y'all going to get sick of seeing it this year, I guarantee you, because I love it that much. I'm going to use the Merry Christmas sentiment, just like this. And so I put my own stamp onto the cut apart and get that beautiful Christmas stamp. There's one. I'm gonna keep going using the same one. I'm gonna use it on this one too. I think it'll be pretty down here in the corner. I might even put it on an angle on this one. I don't know, I think I like it straight. Look at it, so pretty. And then one more. And I think it'll be gorgeous stamped right on top of this um, font paper, just right on it. I don't, I'm not gonna cut a piece of paper out of it or anything to like go behind it. I'm just gonna stamp it right here. I think it'll be gorgeous. Look at that, so pretty and so easy. So now we have more cut aparts ready for our card making. Now we're gonna do something a, super fun and a little different from previous um, videos that I've done like this. We're going to take a cue from the cards that are made called One Sheet Wonder Cards. What I've done is I've gone through and I picked out two pieces of cardstock. I actually chose two, chose two that weren't my most favorite cardstocks. So I chose these two and it also gives me opportunity to use the back side of them as well. So you can see the backs here, which are cute, but they're not my favorite ones from the pack. So I'm gonna use these to kind of be a way to get a lot of cards done fairly quickly. So here's what I'm gonna do. Using my trimmer, I'm gonna pull my little arm out here. I need that out of there. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these down to the size of the mat of an A2 card, the first mat. That means I need it to be four by five and a quarter. So what I'm gonna do is putting this guy into my trimmer, I'm gonna go to the five and one quarter mark, just like this. And then I'm gonna do it one more time and that'll take up most of my piece of cardstock. I'll have a little strip left. So this little strip I can put aside for something else or something we might need in a minute. Then for these guys, I'm gonna cut them down to four, just like this. And I'm gonna do this same cutting with both pieces of cardstock. So I'm gonna cut this one down to four, and then I'm gonna do the other piece of cardstock exactly the same as I just did this one. There's the first sheet. Let's do the other one the same way. Start with your five and a quarter. and then cut your four inch across. So you'll get six all together. So again, I have these two strips I can use for something either now or later, just gonna put those aside. But these guys we're gonna play with and have some fun. So if you remember, we did our little, our smaller cut aparts, these here, we have 12 of these guys, okay? I just counted them. So these two pieces of cardstock are the ones that we just cut down get us 12 pieces here as well. But we're gonna stretch this to go even further because I could absolutely take this to a card base, put this on top, put some decorations, and boom, it's a card. But we're gonna play a little further. So here's what I'm gonna do. Each one of these guys, I'm gonna put two together at a time like this, and I'm just gonna cut them different ways. So this one, for example, I'm gonna cut it on the diagonal. So I'm gonna put it into my trimmer, and I'm gonna run this cardstock on the diagonal from one corner to the other, 
just like so. I don't even really care which orientation I cut them in. It won't matter. It'll matter when I decide where I'm using them on the card. So now I can take these, these four pieces, and I can do four cards instead of two. And here's what that means. I'll mount this to my card base. I can put this here and see I'll have some interest or some different look on my card. I even could run this where um, the angle goes through the card like this. You'll see what I'm talking about in a few minutes. So there's my first cut. I did it on the diagonal. Let's do another cut. So I'm gonna take two pieces again. And this time I think I'll cut them in half long ways. So this is a four inch piece of cardstock. These Both these pieces are four inches. So I'm gonna cut down the middle and that gives me four two inch strips that I can use for card fronts. So now this would go on a card front and I could put this across it like this. I could offset it like that, whatever. You'll see, it'll all make sense. Let's keep playing. Let's take this set of two right here. And for these, I think I will cut them this way down the middle. So this is a five and a quarter piece. So half of that is two and three, let's see, two and five eighths. So I cut that in half at two and five eighths, and now I have these pieces, which I can use on the front of a card, that gives me four. Then I'm gonna go back to these and keep doing the same thing. Just cut them any way you want. For these, I think I'll cut them a little high-low. So I think I'll cut two inches off the bottom of this one. And that gets me strips that I can use at the top or bottom of the card here at this width, and the top of the bottom of the card here with this width, and I could mix them up if I wanted to. So I'm gonna put those over there. For this one, I think I'm just gonna do a slight angle and just kinda eyeball the angle that I want. Um, I could do a more severe angle, but I'm literally gonna eyeball an angle here. You'll see what I'm talking about. Cut this down. And now I have this piece that can go on a card at an angle. And I also have this piece that can go at the top of a card at an angle like this, or it can go on the bottom of a card. So there's that. Then I just have one more to cut. Yep, one more. Let's see how we're gonna do it. I think on this one, I'm gonna do it on the diagonal, but I'm gonna come in an inch at the top here, and I'm gonna come in an inch at the bottom. And the way I'm doing that is using my grid on my trimmer. Let me show you how. So I'm counting over an inch away from the blade here and putting my corner, and I'm counting over an inch of the way, inch of the way away, ooh, let's try that again, huh? And I'm counting over an inch away from the blade at the bottom, See, the four little squares and the four little squares. And now when I cut this, I'll be cutting on an angle, but an inch in, okay? So you can see how this does. So, ooh, I could do it like this, I could do it like that, whatever. So now I have these pieces that I can use on the front of a card as well, in any orientation. Notice how the ornaments are going upside down there? No big deal, I can use them like this, or I can use the other side of the page. Now I'm ready to make myself some card bases. Now you may use pre-made card bases if you want. You can use paper from the paper pack. You'll get less cards that way. Or you can make your own card bases, which is what I'm gonna do. This is some Brutus Monroe Raven cardstock. I love this cardstock. I have lots of it. So I'm gonna be taking eight and a half by 11 pieces of cardstock and cutting them in half on the four and a quarter mark. I like to make my cards in this orientation. You might like your cards to be, um, um, what's the difference? This is gonna be portrait, the way I like them. I can also turn them landscape, but you might like to have yours taller with the fold on the side. Do it either way you want. This is just kind of my go-to. Everybody has their different, and this is mine. So I've made for myself a bunch of card bases, and now I'm just gonna go ahead and score them. I'm not gonna fold them just yet. I just wanna get them scored and ready for when I want to assemble the card, and that way I can draw from all of this pile of bases to get me going pretty quick and get me started. I will not use all black bases. Now, mostly because when you use a black card base, you have to do something to the inside of the card to be able to write in it. So you either need to write with a gel pen or something like that where you can see your sentiment, or what I'm gonna do is create some panels to go inside so it will finish off my card and you'll be able to see um, my sentiment really well. But for now, I'm just gonna score. Since I'm gonna be making cards with black card bases, I need to cut white to put on the inside with my sentiment in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now too. One thing I like to do is work in assembly line, so I don't wanna start and stop and start and stop. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut myself some pieces that are four by five and a quarter that I can then stamp and put on the inside of those cards. When you work in assembly line fashion, you tend to get more done in a shorter amount of time. It's just if you do kind of one card at a time, it takes longer. And you can tell I'm not into the one card at a time kind of thing. I like to do these as many as cards as I can get. So four by five and a quarter, and I'm just gonna cut 
probably about 20 of these to get me started. Here's another little time saving tip. If you're gonna be using full sheets like I am, go ahead and cut half of an inch off of each side. So I'm gonna cut half an inch off of one side. That leaves me this big long strip I can use for something else. And I'm gonna cut a half an inch off of the bottom side, also leaving me half an inch I can use for something else. Then I just cut this down to the right size. In the middle, I cut it up four. And then in the middle of that, five and a quarter. And that will give me exactly what I need for the inside of my cards. So I end up with just what I need and I have long strips left. You don't have to do it that way, that's just one way. It saves you a little bit of cutting on the, on the little bitty tiny cuts. Time to bring out the rubber bandit. Have you guys seen the rubber bandit before? This is an old glitter tray. You can see it's from close to my heart when I was a representative years ago. I added some rubber bands to this. I have a video showing you all about this. But I use this when I'm doing multiple stamping. I sit this to the side and I use it to hold my ink pad so I don't have to open it and close it over and over again. So what I do is I just open my ink pad and I just place it across my little guitar strings, which are rubber bands, right? And I sit that off to the side. So this way I don't have to close my ink in between each pass and I'm gonna use my little mini misty here because it works perfect for this and my cardstock I'm going to put it in the far corner here to stamp my sentiment let me get my sentiment out I'm gonna use the sentiment that says have a holly jolly Christmas so no matter what the front looks like this will work um, and this is from that same holly and heel stamp set you certainly could use a different one I just really like this one so I'm gonna use this one this time and I wanna place this down the other way. That paper's kind of bowing that way. I wanna get it to lay nice and flat. Now, another thing I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna use a magnet. A magnet slows me down on this kind of thing. I'm just gonna make sure I stay in the corner and ink up really well. And if I need to stamp it twice, I still can. I just wanna make sure I have my paper in the far corner. See how much faster that motion is of not having to close your ink or sit it down every time, just moving it to the side. Press this down. I did not check for air bubbles, so I hope I don't have any here. Oh, we did good. So I'm gonna stamp this 20 times. Actually, 24 times. I cut 24. I got a little happy, I just kept cutting. So more assembly line work. I'm going to go ahead and put my um, inserts into my cards. Now I will tell you, I don't always do this this early in the year. Here's what I mean by that. I'm making these cards ahead of time, you know, filming a video for you guys and stuff like that. But many times, most of the time actually, when I'm doing these as many as cards, I don't put the sentiment on the inside while I'm doing the project. The reason is, I don't ever know who the card's gonna go to. This one's generic enough that it's not really a big deal if I um, put the Holly Jolly Christmas in there because I'm gonna wish a lot of people Chris Merry Christmas. But I don't usually do this. I normally wait and do my sentiments closer to time. Um, and in class I teach that as well because having the card made is the biggest part of the job, you know? Getting your card made, getting it ready to go um, in the mail is the biggest part, but then deciding what you wanna say on the inside because maybe you have the perfect sentiment for someone that you're sending a card to and you wanna use that sentiment or maybe the person doesn't celebrate Christmas and you're gonna send them a card that's holiday themed and you don't want it to say Christmas. You just never know what you might run across. So again, I usually don't do this part till later, but I thought since I'm gonna be making this many, I'm gonna go ahead and get these done. Okay, so I have all of my inserts put in, or at least I did several, I didn't do all 24. And now I'm gonna flip these over and have them face this way and I'm gonna work on the front of the card. You just wanna make sure you flip them in the right orientation. So you remember all those little pieces that we cut for ourselves? Now it's time to play with those. I love this piece here, and remember we cut it so we already have a little border around the edge here. You can see that. Now I'm gonna show y'all something because you're gonna see it. My trimmer should have been sharpened and I've just been going to town without using a new blade. But I have probably made, I don't even know how many projects with my trimmer and everybody uses my trimmer and I didn't know my blade was getting rough and it is. So a couple things you can do. Number one, just take your scissors and just trim that away if it bothers you. Also, you could use just a light um, nail file if you have one just to run across there. But the best thing is just tra change your blade. But I didn't pay attention, I just went to cutting, so I'll be needing to do some cleaning. No big deal. All right, so there's that piece if I wanna lay it like that. Then I can come to my little cut aparts and pick out what I want to live on there. That's pretty, that's pretty. I just like to go through and look. And when I find the one I think lives there, this one I think is gonna be it. Look how pretty that is. I'm gonna leave that one there for a second. That one's pretty, that one's pretty. This might work, nope, too many greens touching. 
The red might be cute, but I literally just go through. I even could do it this way. That's a little close, but I could do the card in the other orientation. Um, look at this one. That's cute with it. Mm, I like that one even better than this one. <laughs> this is literally how I do this. So let's lay this one back in there like that. That's cute. That one's even cuter, I think. But that's okay, I can make two of these, remember? I'm gonna put that one aside and make two and put that one over here for something else. So while I'm doing it, I'm gonna go ahead and grab that very same pattern that I already know I like here, and I'm gonna do this card twice. That'll be super cute, so have it here. Also, I can do it here if I wanted to change it up. Have one go in one direction and one go in the other. Oh, that's cute, like it. You can hardly see, let me show you that one again this one up so if I have one go in one direction and one go in the other isn't that cute all right what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna glue these pieces down but I'm gonna use some foam tape for my sentiment piece so now all I need to do is center these guys up they don't even have to be centered I could do it on an angle I'm gonna center it because I'm that kind of girl I'm kind of a clean line person so there's one and then let's do this little guy just like so and this will be a nice, simple card. I'm gonna go ahead now and fold it and crease it. Now that I've got it all done, just lay that down like so. Get my bone folder, which I always hide from myself, especially using this new um, Teflon, because I've been using the Teflon for a while now. I always hide that bone folder because it's white. Look how cute this card is. And when you open the inside, have a holly jolly Christmas. Love it. One done. Wonder how far we'll get. Wonder how many we'll make. All right, so let's do this guy. Fold him in half. Now, I would not do this normally. I would do this assembly line. I'd build all the fronts and then I'd come back and close them, but I'm just going to close these to show you how I do it. So there's two made. Super cool. I love all the black. I'm so into that. That's so cute. All right, two down. Now, I'm just going to continue doing exactly what I did and just let you guys watch with a little music and kind of fast forward it so you can see how this goes. I'm gonna cut in real quick and show you something else I'm gonna do. Remember when I told you to use those long white strips or how to get those from your cards? I'm gonna show you how to use these without even having to measure. I'm gonna run a little bit of glue right down this little strip. I just want a little break in the pattern back here. So I run a little bit of glue. I'm gonna let this hang off the edge just slightly, like so, on both sides of the cardstock. So like this, I'm gonna flip this over and make sure I'm pretty even on both ends and that looks pretty good. Now all I have to do is take my scissors and snip straight up on this end and then I'll hold it this way so you can see and then straight on this end as well, okay? I still can use that little piece but now when I put this down I'll have a little extra pattern there and I didn't have to cut any special strips or anything to make that happen. So see how it feels like more paper and I'm not having to do any fancy footwork. Same thing. This one is just big enough so I can get two out of that one strip. So I'm gonna run this glue right down the edge. Perfect. Stick this guy down so that he hangs off both ends down there so I can trim him off and then just trim straight up. Then I'm gonna glue those down just like a hat bin.
All right, guys, that is 12 cards all made with only one mistake. I'll show you my mistake in a second. <laughs> Two mistakes if you consider I didn't check my blade when I first got started, but one mistake on the card itself. I love these graphic colors. I'm gonna show you this one in a second because that's my mistake. Let me show you these. How beautiful are these colors? They're so may may. This one has to have something written on it or stamped. I'm not sure what I'm gonna put there, but look, I love the way this card turned out, but I forgot that I had done this. Not a big deal. I'll just stamp another piece of white and put it in here correctly, and I'll just stamp the sentiment up and down or to the side so I can write over here. Not a huge deal, but I wish I'd have paid attention, but it's beautiful, isn't it? I love how it turned out. So easy to get that first 12 cards out of this paper pack. Now, as you know, um, I'm actually teaching this class at an event we're at this weekend, or actually starting Thursday. So this is part one, and I'm giving you the part one on Tuesday. The rest will come Thursday through Saturday because my students will have already taken the rest of the class by then. So this is part one. So get your paper out, get started, get to this point, and Thursday and Saturday, we'll keep going and see how many cards we can get out of this pack and tags and whatever else I end up making from it. But there you go. I also wanna tell you this. I started working at 4.30 in the afternoon. It is now a quarter till six. So I have been working for an hour and 15 minutes and got 12 cards. That's not bad. All right, thanks so much for watching, guys. Remember, if you start this project, I wanna see it. Head to our face, our website, which is called maymaymadeit.com. You can share your images and your projects on our customer gallery. You can also share them at our um, Facebook group. We have one called May May Made It and so did I. Lots of fun stuff over there as well. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you again real soon. Bye-bye.